Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to Eden's Promise, Eternity Savage Phase 2, or better known as E12S Phase 2. Before we start, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps support the channel and other folks like you who are looking to get their clears. I also like to thank my raid team and my raid leader Venom for spending a huge amount of time researching these strats for us, so that way our team could get our clears easy peasy. And with every fight in Final Fantasy, there are a variety of ways to handle the different mechanics in this fight, but I'll just be going over the ones that we use to get our clear. One thing to note is that once you clear the door boss from phase one, the duty timer doesn't reset. So in order to maximize your time with this phase, if you wipe two or three times on the door boss, just leave and re-enter the instance to reset the timer. A good rule of thumb is that if the timer has less than 100 minutes on it, go ahead and reset. That way you'll have plenty of time to progress in this fight. Also keep in mind that if you leave the instance at any point during this phase, once you enter again, you'll have to defeat the door boss again. But if you have enough DPS to clear the door boss, you have enough DPS to clear this fight as well. The DPS check is a bit easier here, so if you get the mechanics down, you'll get your clears. As with previous fights, you'll want to choose clock positions for your party, and you'll also want to choose left and right party groups consisting of a tank, a healer, and two DPS. We place our markers here as they'll be important later in the fight. First up, we have Hell's Judgment, which will put everyone's HP to 1. Then, immediately after, she'll cast Shockwave Pulsar, which is a raid-wide AoE. At this point, move the boss towards the north edge of the stage, and let's get ready for the first mechanic. She'll then cast Spell in Waiting, which is a mechanic we've seen before in E2S. This will make her next ability cast delayed with a timer on it. The next sequence of mechanics will either be a spread first and then stack, or a stack first and then spread, with a few consistent mechanics thrown in between. So let's go over the spread, then stack first. She'll cast Dark Eruption, which will put AoEs on everyone. Remember, these don't go off yet because she just casted Spell and Waiting a moment ago. On your debuff bar, you should see a little timer countdown. Just make sure you're spread away from each other when this timer goes off. She'll then cast Spell and Waiting again, and then Dark Water 3. This will place a stack marker on each healer. After those AoEs go off, come back into the boss's hitbox. Both groups will want to stand closer to the boss than the main tank, and get into your tank, healer, or DPS groups. She'll then cast Darkest Dance, which is where she'll jump to the furthest person and hit them with her slam hammer. And then she'll do a little spinny twirl, knocking back everyone who's standing near her. The main tank should also go through the boss and stack with their healer group. You'll want to get knocked back into your left and right groups as the healer AoEs go off moments afterward. So don't leave your healer behind and stack with them. Now let's rewind a bit and go over the same series of mechanics as if it were the stack first and then spread. The timing of the mechanics is exactly the same. Take that AoE hit with your healer groups, she'll then do darkest dance, right after the party gets knocked back, spread out from here. Melees can use their gap closers and range can taper off away from the healers. Be careful using your gap closers here as you might overlap each other with your AoE if everyone's charging at the boss. Pull the boss back into the middle, and she'll then cast Shockwave Pulsar, which is the raid-wide AoE. Soon after that, she'll cast Basic Relativity. And as usual, a lot of things happen here, so let's go over all the mechanics in detail, starting with the Hourglass Towers. Six towers will be placed on the outside of the stage, as well as one yellow tower. We'll use the yellow tower as our new relative north. All towers have sort of like an energy bar to them, and when the bar becomes full, a giant laser beam shoots out of them. They'll always target the closest player to them, so you'll want to bait these lasers away from the party. The boss will then put out four tethers to certain towers, two yellow tethers and two purple tethers. The yellow tethers always attach themselves to the east and west tower. The two purple tethers will either attach themselves to the close towers or the far towers. These tethers show us which towers are going to fire their laser beams first. The towers with the yellow tethers will fire first, followed by the towers that didn't have tethers, and then finally the towers that got the purple tethers. There will be a knockback by the end of the phase, and the party will also get certain debuffs on them as well as countdown timers associated with certain debuffs. So now let's go over each tank, healer, and DPS movement separately, and then we'll come back and see how they all work in concert together to get us through basic relativity. For the two healers, you'll be baiting the towers with the yellow tethers. One healer will bait the left tower, while the other healer will bait the right tower. You'll want to go and bait your towers immediately, and stand a bit off to the side to bait those lasers so you don't hit the party. Wait for the lasers to go off, and then come back in and line up close to that yellow tower, in between the tanks and the DPS, on your lineup side. You'll either get the gaze or the water stack mechanic. The reason you're lining up between the DPS and the tanks is so that the DPS can keep maximum uptime, nobody gets hit with the gaze, and in the case that the 
tanks get the gaze, your character is facing towards the boss so you can continue to DPS. Drop your rewind debuff and then head back to the center of the stage. For tanks, you'll either get close towers or far towers depending on which towers the purple tethers attach themselves to. Like the healers, one tank will bait the left tower while the other tank baits the right. Take note of the towers that had the purple tethers attached to them. Wait in the middle for the fire blizzard mechanic to go off and then line up closest to the yellow tower. You'll either have a gaze or a stack mechanic on your character, so just be sure you're looking towards the outside of the stage and away from the other tank or the healers. The rest of the party should be facing the boss, so everyone will dodge the gaze mechanic in case you get it. Place your rewind debuff down and then go to your tower that had the purple tethers. Bait its laser away from the party and I suggest you pop sprint here so you can reach your tower a bit quicker in case they're far towers. For the DPS, it gets a little tricky. The DPS will either get a fire or a blizzard debuff. There are also timers on the fire or blizzard debuffs as well. If the timer is around 15 seconds, then that's the first mechanic to go off. If the timer is around 30 seconds, then it's the second mechanic to go off. The way that we call it out is whichever debuff has the 15 second timer on it, we call out fire first or blizzard first. This will determine how the DPS moves through this phase as well as the party. In this example, it's blizzard first because it has the 15 second timer on it. The blizzard is a donut AOE that goes off on your character, so everyone except for the healers should be stacked in the middle. Once the blizzard goes off, the two DPS with the blizzard will want to stand on the outsides near the close towers. They'll then each take a laser hit from either the close towers or the far towers, and the cool thing about this setup positioning is that regardless of which towers fire first, they'll never hit the party. After you place your rewind down, move back to the center and the two DPS with the fire debuffs will move out of the middle towards the sides and take their fires out there. Be careful not to clip the tanks because they're baiting their laser towers at this point. After the fires go off, everyone will rewind back to their positions. The yellow tower will knock everyone back to the other side of the stage and you'll want to stack with your relative party groups. The two healers or the two tanks will have the AOE stacks on them so they resolve at this point. Now let's go back and see it all happen again with fires first this time. So everyone will get their debuffs. We'll call out fire first, the healers get their towers, the two DPS with the fires will just disengage towards the yellow tower on the left and right side like this. The fires go off, everyone lines up, place your rewind down, then head back into the middle as the tanks grab their towers, so everybody except for the tanks stack in the middle, the blizzard will go off, the rewind will grab people back and the knockback will happen, everyone stack in your respective left and right groups, and that completes basic relativity. One thing to note for DPS is that you'll want to have somebody be flexible in case they get the same debuff. Say for instance we had two melees stack on the left and two range stack on the right if they got blizzard. Well, if the two ranges got blizzard, then one range will have to flex while the other one had to stay. It's just something to be aware of and usually only calls for two party members to switch positions, so do what's best for your group. She'll then cast Shockwave Pulsar, which is the raid-wide AoE, so heal up accordingly. And now we'll get into Singular Apocalypse. She'll cast Cataclysm, in which she'll turn and face the direction. You'll want to go out of her butt and make your way towards the edge of the stage. She'll then jump towards the edge of the stage where she's looking at and slam her hammer down, forming a giant AoE. At this point, when you're running back in, notice this little light pulse here. It can travel either clockwise or counterclockwise around the stage, and we always know where the safe spot is due to which way it's traveling. If the light pulse is traveling clockwise, then the safe spot will be on the opposite side of the boss from where the light pulse was traveling, or around northwest. If the light pulse was traveling counterclockwise, then the safe zone is on the other side of the boss, or around northeast. Before those light AoEs go off, the boss will cast Black Halo, which is a double tank buster cleave, so face her towards the outside of the arena, away from the party. Once that goes off, make sure you don't get clipped by the middle AoE, or the one that explodes north, respectively, soon afterwards. If you notice the stage, you'll see these pizza slices. You can use these lines as a guide to dodge the AoE explosions rotating around the stage. You can also use the circle graphic in the middle of the stage to gauge how big the middle explosion is. These lines are pretty much the edge of the AoEs when they explode. After that middle AoE goes off, head right back into the middle where the boss will slam the party with her hammer, and then spread out as she'll slam her hammer down again on one person with Spirit Taker. At the same time, the AoEs from the light pulses are going off and rotating around the stage, so look out for those as well. 
She'll then cast Shockwave Pulsar for the raid-wide AoE, we reposition the boss towards the north, and we get ready for Intermediate Relativity. A raid-wide AoE hits everyone at the same time. Everyone will get a set of debuffs on them, so let's go over what each debuff means and the movement for the party. First, the debuffs. Think of these debuffs as three columns with the furthest right column mechanic going off first, then the middle, and then the last one here. These debuffs can appear in any order, but their placement positions on the stage are exactly the same. Although the movement might be a little bit different. This debuff here is a spread AoE, so they should be taken at your clock positions. This gaze debuff is looking away from that person. This blue triangle is flares, so it's an AoE. This yellow arrow down is a stack marker. These green debuffs are arrows, which will cast an AoE around you. And if you stand too close, you get knocked back. And Blizzard, you've seen that before. It's just a donut AoE that that's cast around you. Back to the rewind mechanic. Once that debuff counts down to zero, it will place the debuffs in the columns down on the stage in order from right to left. Before we talk about where to place your debuffs, you'll want to assign clock positions for the spread debuffs and corner spots on the middle marker. For the spread AoEs, or this purple circle right here, place those in your clock positions outside near the edge of the stage. Once those are placed, let's look at the second column in our case with the flares, the eyes, and the yellow stack marker. For the eyes, you'll want to place them down on the corner of the marker like this. For the yellow stack marker, you'll want to place it down on the outside of your corner on the marker. For the blue flares, you'll want to spread these out at the edge of the stage. You can kind of use your clock positions for reference here, but if you're next to someone who also has a flare, make sure you're not too close to each other or else those AoE damages will kill you. For the third column, everyone with Blizzard should come back in and place their rewind mechanic in the middle while the people with arrow stand on the outside of the stage relative to their clock positions. Right before you place the last debuff, turn your character and have them face the outside of the stage. Don't greed here. Many of our runs were lost because we wanted to get an extra hit in on the boss, so don't risk it. If you face your character towards the outside, you'll avoid the gaze mechanic that we placed at the corner of the markers, and thus everyone is facing away from them if you look towards the outside of the stage. And once the final rewind gets placed, your character will hop from place to place as the mechanics go off in sequence. And if you did it all correctly, nobody would have gotten doom, and you're all alive to continue the fight. Also, watch for which debuff you get as they'll swap around, so just place them correctly in order as they come out. Come back to the middle for another Shockwave Pulsar and heal up accordingly. Next, we'll get into Dual Apocalypse. She'll once again cast Cataclysm where she'll turn and face the direction and you'll want to go out of her butt towards the edge of the stage. She'll jump to where she's facing and create that giant AoE. And at this point, you'll either get the good pattern or the not so good pattern, depending on where the light orbs spawn on the stage. So let's go over both. If you get the good pattern, Melee can gap close right after the AoE goes off for DPS uptime, stay north while the DPS stays south, wait for the center light AoE to explode, and then come back into the middle. If you get the bad pattern, the ranged DPS will have to rotate 90 degrees towards the left side, and the melees will have to look out for the light AoE that explodes north after the middle goes off. Basically, you'll want to adjust where you dodge to avoid the middle AoEs and the AoEs that are appearing on the outside of the stage. Now, here's where the tanks gotta step up their game and do a couple of movements. She'll cast Somber Dance, which is handled like so. The main tank will need to be the furthest away from the party, so the boss will jump on them first, at the same time avoiding the AoEs that are exploding around the edges. The boss will then hit the closest person, which in this case should be the off tank. So it's a bit of a pop sprint and switch tank spots while avoiding the AoEs at the edge of the stages. It'll take a few runs to get used to the timings, but as soon as the second tank sees that first animation hit on the first tank, the second tank should be moving towards the boss to take the second hit while the first tank runs away. One thing to note with the party is that you'll want to be as close to the boss as possible without getting clipped by those light AoEs going around the stage. You can use the circle in the middle as a reference point for the edge of the AoEs or max melee distance if the boss doesn't move from her spot. After that, everyone should come back into the middle and stack for Shell Crutcher, where she'll hit the party for a shared stack damage, then spread out as you did before. She'll target one person and give them the Slam Hammer, Spirit Taker. After that, come back into the middle for Shockwave Pulsar. Next, she'll cast Advanced Relativity. So she'll go untargetable in a moment, so don't use your 90 or 2 minute buffs here. Save them for when she returns after the mechanic. An AoE will hit the party pretty hard here, and we'll get lots of debuffs. So let's figure out what all of it means and how we take care of this mechanic. 
First up, the marker placements that come into play here are very important. We assign one tank, healer, and DPS group to the letter markers A, B, and C, and the other group to the 1, 2, and 3 markers. Six towers appear, and there will be yellow and purple tethers attaching themselves to opposite towers. If you're in the group with the A, B, or C markers, you're going to go to the tower marked with the yellow tether that's on either A, B, or C. Same that if you're in the group that's assigned the 1, 2, or 3 markers, you're going to go to the tower that's marked with a yellow tether on the markers 1, 2, or 3. Also, a little side note, if two DPS in the same groups get the same debuff pattern, those DPS need to swap groups. Then all the other movements for the mechanics and debuff placements are exactly the same. Now, this is where this diagram comes into play in combination with the debuffs that you get. The rewind debuff will place those debuffs on the stage after each countdown, and we're also going to use the stage markings to place each debuff down in the correct position. Here's the movement for fire. The last placement for fire will have two positions. We have the range on the outside and the melee on the inside. So at the last placement, there will be four in a line who each take fire. Same if it's the tanks and the healers. The healers go to the outside and the tanks will go on the inside. Here's the movement for double arrow or the green debuffs. And here's the movement if you have eye gaze and arrow. One thing to note for healers is that you can still heal the party on your side as you're placing down your rewinds. After the final rewinds go off, face the outside of the stage and watch all the fireworks happen. Some folks will get knocked back to the other side of the stage, stack with your new groups, top up on some heals, and start your reopeners. The boss will then cast another Shockwave Pulsar. Triple Apocalypse is next, so get ready to pop sprint at the end of the cast. A little light orb will come out from the center of the stage. Follow this to the edge and see which way it turns. It'll either go clockwise or counterclockwise. Clockwise. The safe spot will always be towards the direction that orb travels when it reaches the edge of the stage. In our case, the orb went right or clockwise, so our safe spot was going to be at the A marker. The boss will cast Darkest Dance, which will hit the furthest person away, which should be the main tank. They'll run to the edge of the stage, while the rest of the party moves towards the A marker, avoiding the middle light explosion, and then moving slightly back into the center. As soon as the boss jumps and hits the tank, she'll do her little twirly twirl and knock back the party. The key here is that you want to get knocked back towards the same side as the safe spot. In our case, it was towards the left side. If the light orb went left or counterclockwise, like in this case, the safe spot was three. Dodge the AoE in the middle. The main tank will go to the edge. The party will move back into the middle slightly. She'll jump on the main tank and then everyone will get knocked back to the right. So you're good to go. Just keep in mind that if the boss's position is accurate, then you'll always get knocked back to the same side from where that first light orb originated. Shockwave Pulsar comes out next. Then she'll cast Black Halo, which is a conal AoE tank buster. So stay away from the tanks. And then she'll cast Terminal Relativity, which is the single most powerful AoE hit in the game. After each Shockwave Pulsar, the boss will get a damage boost stack after each hit, so you'll want to work with your party to plan out your mitigations properly for the rest of the fight. They all hit really hard, so your whole party should use everything they have. Terminal Relativity will also put mini AoEs on the whole party that will explode in between the Shockwave Pulsars. You have three more Shockwave Pulsars to deal with, followed by her Enrage, Memory Zen. And if you have a solid run, congratulations on your clear for E12S. And what a cool fight to end the Savage Tears for Shadowbringers. Uh, not only did it have a cool story, it also had mechanics and themes that fit within the story arcs of the characters. Rain and Gaia is a pair that everybody loves, you know, their friendship and memories and all that jazz. So it took us about three or four lockouts to clear this fight when we were first progressing, so that should give you an idea of how long it'll take for you. And thank you guys so much for supporting the channel, and, you know, like, favorite, and subscribe, and all that jazz, it doesn't matter to me, but I hope it matters to you. And I can't wait to see you all in the next Ultimate Savage and the next expansion. Again, I'd like to thank my raid group and all of our friends on Behemoth out there who've put up with my horrible pronunciations and uh, subpar DPS. And I hope that you can share the knowledge and kindness with all the other adventurers you meet just so we can have a bit of fun and encourage a healthy raiding community. So until next time, enjoy those clears and keep on adventuring.